Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Picture with a black frame, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, here is the opportunity of a lifetime. And this is not an advertisement. You probably have had your eye on a beautiful new car that you've always wanted. Or there's some high dramatic blonde that you've never quite been able to afford. Or maybe it's just a trip to Europe that you'd like to have. Well, my friend, you're going to have them all. Yes, sir, each and every one. Or whatever else you'd like to purchase with the biggest chunk of lettuce you ever saw. That lettuce is going to be yours, Mr. Valentine. You can just take your murder cases and stack them in the closet when you've heard what I've got to say. Because, Valentine, I got a proposition with bells on it. Bells that ring. Francis P. Bodget. Art photographs. That's my line. What was that? Oh, uh, maybe I'd better get back to my typing. Now, here. now, honey, listen to what I have to say. Every man has a vocation and an avocation. His business and his pleasure. But you've tried to combine yours. Don't get me wrong. I'm a legitimate photographer. Artistic shots of your home and kiddies with family groups especially. Yeah, I'll keep it in mind. And when it comes a Sunday and the normal busman is taking a holiday, where am I? Out of the country club taking pictures. Family group. Valentine, listen to me. Sunday I take a picture, see, because this citizen says take it. He says there's a couple of newlyweds over there behind the potted palm dancing with themselves. Take a picture. And so what do I say? Two eight by ten's five bucks. And you're going to give me 40%? That's two bucks. Detective, I take the picture and I develop it last night. And now I got a print right here. You see, it's not just a routine picture, because now I catch on. It's not just routine people. You mean the newlyweds? Honey, you just said yourself a misnomer. That's what they're not. Now, the man, I'm not too sure about him. He didn't come out too clear. But the girl will layer something. Of course, the photograph doesn't convey the pearls by Cartier, the dress like Ida Down, or perfume... Roger, would you off, please but... stop talking and say something? Hmm. Tonemaker. That's something, isn't it? Tonemaker? Like in the blue book, honey. Like in stocks and bonds. Like in the biggest marble palace with millions and millions and millions. The girl's a tonemaker. Now you get me? Yes. Yes, I think I'm finally beginning or to. Or at least she is going to be shortly. And that's the point. Her name is Lydia, and she's going to marry Whitley Tonemaker. She's staying out of their place now, according to the society page. Oh, it's an understatement to say that little Lydia was displeased when I slapped this photo of her. So uh, intimate with somebody else. <laughs> displeased. She practically chased me a mile before I got away. There. There, honey. Now I can see the light of understanding on your lovely face. You certainly do. It's blackmail. That's what your picture is. Just something to blackmail somebody named Lydia with. No, don't get Victorian on me. Sure, Brooksy. Let's hear the rest of it. But George, no, this I'm always interested in a good proposition, uh... Where do I fit in? <laughs> Every man has his limitations. This marble tonemaker palace isn't so easy to crash. And in my case, well, I could maybe use a little more polish or respectability. You can say that again. You uh, want me to front for the job, is that You've it? You've driven the nail clear through the board. That's it. Well, come on, come on, partner. Let's see the picture. Well, I do have it right here. Hey, but that's only the print. Where's the negative? Not so fast. My place is down at the Bedford. You didn't bring it, huh? Well, okay, hold up the print. I can't see it very well. But long. first, we've got to work out an agreement. Get away from that. Oh, let me see it. I oh, won't No, hurt it. not until you've agreed to it. Look out. Hey, that's an open it. window, Buster. There. Scatter to the birds. All right. So you tear it up and throw it out. You shouldn't be so grabby, partner. Why don't you cool off? I'm with you. I suppose you tell me who asked you to take that picture in the first place, huh? Maybe I'm wrong. 
Maybe you're not the type to confide in. <laughs> you're right, friend. I'm more the type for this. Hey, cut it out. Now, don't. Now, get out of here, you two type. Oh, thin type. All right. All right, so I'm wrong. Lay off. Lay off. Well, what a nice character. Yeah. Brooksy, I think I'd better trot over and crash that town to make a palace. This girl, Lydia, may need a little warning. With that thing loose, I'll say she does. Wait look at my hat. You're not you? going, just me. But You've got a job picking up the pieces of that photograph down on the street, Angel. Uh, happy jigsaw. Lydia? Lydia? Why should you wish to see her, young man? Where did you meet Father? her? Father? Mother, for heaven's sakes, what's all the noise? Quickly, will you please throw this young man out? Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello there. Is your name Wickley Tonemaker? Yes, that's right. Uh, Wick, generally. And yours? George Valentine. I see. Uh, oh, well, Mother, uh, Cousin Mel's in there waiting for a decision on the steel I came here to see uh, uh, Lydia, Mr. Tonemaker. Oh. <laughs> there, you see. <laughs> now, will you throw him out? Mother, please. What's it about, Valentine? Well, let's say that I'm a reporter from a magazine. I understand you and this Lydia are going to be married. There has been no official announcement, Mr. Valentine. I've already warned the society editors to say nothing about this. Yes, we're going to be married in the next couple of weeks, maybe. What about it? Well, several things. For instance, Lydia what? I don't even have a full name yet. It's Tonemaker. Uh, it's what? That's right, Tonemaker, just like my name. You see, Lydia happens to be my younger brother, Tony's... his widow. Oh, I didn't understand. Ha! Oh, no, not much. Can't you just see the nice, fancy story... Mother, stop it. There's no reason Lydia can't make her own statements. Valentine, she's in the music room downstairs. Quickly. I'm the head of this house. What's holding everything up? There's a steel corporation that's waiting for a decision, and here you are, all jabbering about that unimportant little tramp. Melvin, I've already told you what to tell those people. Get out of here, will you, Valentine? Sure. Quite a place, isn't it, Mr. Valentine? No bars on the windows, of course. Yeah. You, uh, you're certain there isn't a chaperone listening in. Oh, this is my free time. We're quite alone. I assure you, I was also alone last Sunday. I wasn't at any country clubs having my picture taken. Mm-hmm. You weren't, huh? No. All right, Mrs. Tonemaker, suppose... The name's Lydia. You don't believe me, do you? Very well... What difference does it make? Look here, Lydia, you I didn't... You came to warn me, and I appreciate it. Mr. Valentine, do you know that I was never in this crazy place until a month ago? Hmm. But I thought you were formally married to... I was to... married to Tony, but that was all in the East, because Tony was the black sheep of the family. That was also several years ago. Tony died in 1947. Oh, I see. I loved Tony. I never met his family. They practically disowned each other. I probably never would have met them, except that, well, his brother Wickley came back east on business. And he was very nice to me, very thoughtful and, well... Well, one thing led to another. Don't be nasty. Wick's a wonderful person. He just made the wrong choice in me, that's all. Look, clear it up, will you? I'm a tramp, Mr. Valentine. And instead of the tone to make a tribe being burned once, it should happen twice. They don't approve of you? Do you ever approve of gold-digging widows of your own drinking children? Oh, Tony drank, huh? He was pretty hopeless, I'm afraid. He wasn't nearly the person Wick is. He died that way. Now, when I want to salvage something of my life with a very wonderful man, I find that no one approves. Wick's mother, cousin Melvin, the family lawyers... All they care about is trying to prove to Wick that I'm not eligible, that I wear lipstick and speak to strange They men. want to break this up because they blame you for Tony's death? <laughs> you understate it so badly, Mr. Valentine. You see, I murdered Tony. You what? Yes. Yes, indeed. Sure, I poured him full of drinks and pushed his car over a cliff... 
Of course, the police could never prove it. I was much too clever for that. Now, look, lady, will you But please? the motive was all there. It was money. Tony's peddling little trust fund. I'm the little tramp who broke into the palace grounds by marrying the black sheep. But once I'm through, the town to make a fence. Of course, I have to get rid of the little one and go for the big ones. Wickley, no less, the head of the family, the richest of them all. The one who builds the trust fund. Don't stop doodling on that thing, will you? So that's what they think. And it wouldn't make any difference if you happen to love Wick now, I suppose. Do I? Mr. Valentine, at this point, I'm really not sure that I care what any of the tonnemakers oh, tried. Oh, no, no, you don't care, do you? Like you don't care that Wick's not the head of the family. Mm, he'll stand up to them. I know he will. To his old crone of a mother and his nasty-minded cousin. Will he, if it turns out you're running around with somebody else? If we were ever found out that a picture was taken of you for blackmail purposes? Now, come on, who were you with last Sunday? For the last time, I tell you, nobody. Only, I am upset. I'm worried stiff. I received a telephone call this morning. A man's voice said I should come to room 12 at a place called the Bedford. The Bedford? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, that's where... Budget said his place was. Budget? Yeah, the photographer I told you about. Come on, what else? Well, that's all. Just that it was important and I should be there alone. Only I'm afraid to. I, Well, I thought it must be some kind of blackmail. I'd certainly be willing to pay to keep anything from poor Wick. Only I don't know what it is they could have. Really, I don't. But you'd like to find out, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because you think it's probably a frame. Well, okay, Lydia, let's find out. Let's walk right into it, see what the picture is. Oh, Mr. Valentine, thanks. Come on, leave your car so they'll think we're still here. I'll take one of theirs. I can drive. Bedford, huh? Not much of a place, is it? It's a darkened corridor. Well, there, that's ten. Yeah, must be over here on the right. Mm. So give me a lighter. Yeah, there it is. Twelve. Well, take it easy. People roll out the red carpet for this kind of business proposition. I guess we're early. I don't hear anyone. Well, there's got to be some lights on that wall. No, I can't seem to find it. Listen, Mr. Valentine. No, that was just me fumbling with the lighter. What the... Oh, hey. Just a little flash bulb, that's all, folks. That birdie won't hurt you. It'll be a beautiful picture, I'm sure. Many thanks to both of you. Budget, right. where are you, Tony? He got away. Flash, I couldn't see a thing. That was him? Yeah, yeah, that was him, all right. And here's the lighter. Well, this isn't his place. It can't be. No, but he took his picture. And I guess now you are in trouble. You and me and, and an empty hotel room. <laughs> we didn't just walk into this frame, lady. We dived in head first. <laughs> Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. If your car has an automatic transmission, you'll be glad to know that you can get it properly serviced at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations. These service stations have the correct transmission fluid that's approved by the manufacturer of your car. Equally important, the men here are specially trained in the care of an automatic transmission. And don't think it doesn't require special care. For well, that transmission is a precision-built unit. The smallest amount of dirt could damage its mechanism. The wrong fluid level would be harmful, too. And to keep this vital unit in good working order, you should have it checked every thousand miles. Also, at regular intervals, it should be drained and refilled. Ask for this car saver service at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You didn't just walk into a frame-up, you dived in head first. You and Lydia Tonemaker went to a certain address to find out just what kind of a blackmail offer was going to be made to her, just what kind of an incriminating picture they had of Lydia. And what happened? Of course, a picture was taken right then and there, a picture of the two of you to be used for blackmail. 
Needless to say, if your name is George Valentine, this is not the sort of thing that is easy to explain to Claire Brooks or to Lieutenant Darley. <laughs> No, oh, no, no, no. Don't even try. We understand. Okay, so I'm a sucker. Okay, and now will you please... don't make up excuses, George. You must have looked cute. All right, go on, go on. Have fun. But that girl's in a spot, I tell you. I we... should hope to say so. A man with your reputation. Riley, will you please? All right, all right. Uh, the Bedford, you say, Valentine? Yes, that's the same place Bodget told us his shop was. Well, there's a New Bedford, Old Bedford, Bedford Uptown, and several others. But it only took us about five minutes of checking to find out that none of those places ever even heard about it. Well, look, Riley, I had no reason to check. At least we know he's a photographer. We can't find anybody who knows anything about it. The first time I saw him, I was too interested in getting a look at the picture he'd already taken. Would you really like to see that first picture, George? Oh, would I? Huh? Hey, Brooksy, you don't mean you found all those pieces. Well, there's still some gaps, but I think you can tell what the picture was. The one he persuaded us was so important. Huh? Oh. Good shot, isn't it? Man and a woman. Yes, George. Hedy Lamar and Victor McCoy. Yes, yes, I, uh, I, uh, recognize him. <laughs> yeah, sucker, I believe that was the way you so perceptibly described yourself. So the whole thing has been a frame. Bodget's letter is coming to see us. Everything was just a come on. I guess so. To get us interested and get you out there. And to shake Lydia loose from being so careful, so decorous for the sake of that family and... Walk right into it with me. Ah, pretty feeble, though, isn't it? Feeble? Yeah, sure, sure. What can Bodge do with a picture like that one of you two? The girl won't pay anything for it. She might lose a lot of happiness from it. I told you what's going on in the Tonomega dynasty. Everybody trying to break up a marriage to Wick. George, one of those people must have hired Bodge. Yes, Angel. All I have to do is find out who hired him. Or else kick myself out of town. <laughs> You weren't so easy to locate, Lydia. Oh, the Valentine. Have one of these. Bartender. No, uh, no thanks. What happened? They throw you out already? I walked right out by myself. Why shouldn't I? I'm a gone woman now. All right, rub it in. It wasn't your fault. There are certain ways a murderous and gold digger supposed to act. And I've been so careful not to act any of them. Soap and water girl, strictly. Ever since I came here from the East, I've walked the little old-fashioned line. Looks more like a line of old fashions now. Oh, yeah, yeah, now I'm different. Look at me. Eyeshadow, French makeup. Smell. Black orchids, imported. A hussy's a hussy, Mr. Valentine. Bring me another one, bartender. Hey, wait a minute. Look, you don't really want it, do you? I don't even like the taste. I'm just sick and tired of... What's the matter with that sissy boyfriend? Didn't you tell Wick what happened? Didn't you explain to him? I couldn't even talk to him alone. His mother wanted him. There's a family conference on the steel and... Why do you waste your time in the first place on a guy like that? Because I'm a conniving little tramp, that's why. I'm out after money. I've crashed the gate, now I'm trying to get control of the whole Tonemaker Empire. The whole silly... Oh. Man enough to knock your block off five times. All right. All right, I'm sorry. Wick is just... Oh, well... Change the subject. Who hired Bodget? Figured that out, too, huh? Ah, uh, what difference does it make? If you married Wick, the whole inheritance picture of the Tonemaker Empire would change. Probably lots of people would like to see him stay a bachelor the rest of his life. I'm sure all of them would. So what? Whoever did it has plans for the picture. That's the important thing. The entire family's been involved in a conference for most of the day. They want to see me in half an hour. You want to bet they've already seen that picture of us? Of course they have. So don't worry, Lydia. I'll be there in a half hour, too. But with some facts. If I can find them. Hi, Sergeant. Can you tell me? Hey, Riley. Riley. Oh, hello, Valentine. Say, I sent the tonomakers the picture. Did you see it? What are you talking about? George, 
Lieutenant Riley found the picture, the one of you and Lydia. Yeah? He sent it out to the town to make her house. You did what, Riley? Why? Give me a valentine. Right in here. You bet I did, friend. <laughs> this isn't just a little photo game anymore. I wanted to start the explosion. Here. Here he is. Look. He... Watch it. That's right, my friend. We found him all right for you. Dead. Where? In the alley near the Tanamaker place. Shot three times with a thirty-two. A print of the picture was crumpled up in his pocket. Still wet. So the little hired tin type had to be moved out of the way, huh? All right, Riley, come on. Huh? Come on where? You're going to be a character witness to take off my frame. Only it won't be in a hurry to tell the good people about the black border. And uh, that's exactly what happened at the Bedford, ladies and gentlemen. That explains the picture. Oh, I don't believe it. Not one word of it. Mrs. Tanamaker, Mr. Valentine hadn't even met your daughter-in-law until this morning. You will please not refer to her as my daughter-in-law. Mother, stop it, will you? I don't see why she should. I agree with her, Wickley. Shut up. Shut up, all of you. Wickley. You've all been trying to stop me from marrying Lydia ever since I met her. You've tried every dirty trick you could think of. Wickley, stop that this minute. I, I guess it might have worked, all your propaganda against her. I was beginning to doubt myself. But now, now that somebody, some one of you, actually exposed all of your cards by this, this cheap, transparent, phony attempt at compromising Lydia with Mr. Valentine... I'm I... not so convinced yet. You yourself thought she might have actually murdered Tony back in 47. I did not. It was you who made me think that, Melvin. And now I'll bet it was you who hired that photographer. Hmm. Did you? Never even heard of him. Just can't find him. Ask him. You can't, my friends. He's dead. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I guess we might as well tell him now, Riley. Yeah, Budget, the photographer, was murdered. Is that so, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's right. Now, suppose he was murdered by a member of the Tonemaker family. By the person who hired him, so nobody could ever find out who hired him. Or maybe he wanted too much money for the job. I don't know. Now, see here, Mr. Ballard. Never mind, never I... mind. I think I've seen all I need. Thanks very much. Now I'll go get Lydia. You uh, won't mind waiting. You got called plenty of names by the others, Lydia. Gold digger? Murderers? Oh, sure, sure. The works. I told you Wickley was a man. He'd stand up to... Uh, go on playing, will you, Lydia? Lydia, whoever hired Bodger did a crazy thing. Or, uh, at least I thought so at first. He picked me. What? Now, why pick me for a patsy? To be framed in that picture with you. Well, you see, I finally caught on. They needed somebody who'd be able to break past the guard in this crazy house. Somebody who'd be stubborn enough to get sore after it all happened, and then, like I just did, come up to tell them all off. Explain just what a transparent, cheap attempt it was. Why? You wanted the picture to be convincing. You were trying to keep Wickley from marrying the little tramp. Lydia, when they called you all those names, gold digger, murderess, you know what I said? What, Mr. Valentine? I said nothing. What's that? I didn't agree because I saw it all so clearly, Lydia. Why the picture frame up had to be arranged so transparently? Because timid little Wickley had to see right through it. He wouldn't let his dirty old family do a thing like that, no siree. And would he ever believe that one of them hadn't hired Budget? Not in a million years. He'd just defy everybody, including his own better judgment, and marry you. I just completely don't understand. You hired Budget, sister. You said you'd never seen the little man before. You also told me you hadn't been wearing perfume since you came to live with the stuffy tonemakers. And yet he knew enough about you to mention that your perfume had something to do with orchids. And it does. Black orchids. All the ridiculous far Where'd you know him? New York? Did he by any chance help you get rid of the first tonemaker back in 1947? You're just like all the rest of them. I didn't kill Tony. I don't even care whether you did. 
But you killed Bodger, didn't you? You had to, I suppose. A guy who knew that much about no, you. No, no, I didn't. Because you arranged the frame, sister. No doubt about that. In this town, there's a new Bedford, old Bedford, Bedford Uptown. And yet somehow you drove us straight to the right one. Sure, you and Bodger had already picked it. So, of course, you knew where to go. Stop it. Stop it. And no. And you're the one who I... benefits. No. Crash the gates, marry another ton of me. Wait. Well, it's a closed clan, Lydia. No. Yeah, they hold conferences all day. And so they all end up with alibis for Bodgett's murder. And where does that leave you? Please, I... Out wandering around alone. Oh, no, you don't, Here. sister. Get away from there. Get away from that purse. Uh, let go of me. Let go of me, you ugly, flat-footed big... I know. Go ahead. Call me names like you call yourself. <laughs> Best way to look innocent is to walk right into it. Kid about your own guilt. Well, you walked into it this time, Lydia, but good. Yeah, she just fell apart, Angel. Even admitted killing Tony. Mm. Riley's writing it all down. Well... It just shows what happens when a girl gets ambitious, doesn't it, Joe? Yeah, it sure does. So uh, just let that be a lesson <laughs> to you, Brooksy. Well, the only thing that bothers me is... Hold it, neighbors. Hey. There you are. Thanks very much. Here's your card. Mail it in to me. What in the name of heaven is that? Snappy card? photo service. Mail in the card. That's all you have. Hey, did that guy just George, take now a... now stop. He didn't do anything. He just took our picture. A nice, intimate shot. Sterling, arm and arm. Hey, give me that no, card. No, I'll tell no, guy. no. Maybe I'll want to get ambitious someday. Huh? Just wait till I show it to my family, darling. What makes a car grow old? What makes it lose its pep and power? Well, one of the biggest threats to your car's youth is gum. Gum that makes engine parts stick. This gum is caused by impurities that are found in most raw gasoline. The only way to get rid of these impurities is to refine them out. And Chevron Supreme is the gasoline that is super refined to eliminate gum. Just try a tankful tomorrow. Chevron Supreme gasoline will give you that new car feeling. You'll notice how your car starts faster, how much more peppy it is in traffic, and how it gives you new ping-free power on hills. Another thing you can depend on from this premium quality gasoline is full mileage in the kind of driving you do. So ask for super refined Chevron Supreme and enjoy again that new car feeling. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Joe Forte was heard as Bodget, Louise Arthur as Lydia, Lorene Tuttle as Mrs. Tonemaker, Jack Edwards as Wickley, And Paul McVeigh is Melvin. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. If you've been putting off your contribution to the 1950 cancer crusade, the time is now, as time is short. Please mail your contribution today to Cancer, care of your local post office. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.